Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, you will forgive me for being a bit distracted during this solve. Um, it's been a wretch of a day. Well, my son has had a wretched day today. He broke his arm playing rugby this morning. And, uh, yeah, I've spent a fair amount of the day at the hospital. He's uh, spent a fair amount of the day in pain and a lot of the rest of the day in a plaster cast. And that's going to stay on for weeks or months and uh yeah we're all feeling a bit a bit low in the household to be honest at the moment but i am going to get back into the groove by having a look at this puzzle by spell daddy who i think um well good name for today who i think has been uh active on the discord server for a while but i don't think has ever appeared on the channel before so a debut for spell daddy um now, we'll look at that in a moment. Don't forget the Patreon content. We have the monthly reward. Uh, Guess Again is the name of the hunt this month. And loads of correct entries flooding in. Very well done to those of you who've got the four-letter word required. Congratulations. Um, lots of people, that is, by the way. Um, so thank you very much if you follow us on Patreon at all. If you check in at the Discord channel like Spell Daddy, if you... Uh, if you have bought our apps, we are very grateful for everything you do for us. And uh, we try to return that by doing a couple of videos every day and also Wordle videos at the moment. And there's occasional extra content on Patreon. I'll be putting out the solves to the previous month's um, prize puzzles tomorrow. And this is today's. So it's called A Window into the Rim. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in cages must sum to the small number in the top left corner of the catch. Additionally, digits that are knights move apart in chess may not repeat. So, you know the knights move rule. If we had a five here, that would mean we couldn't have a five in any of these cells because that's a chess knights move away. So you can never have two identical digits and knights move apart. Um, we must remember that as we go through the solve. We'll probably forget it because it's often unhelpful early on and then helpful later, but we'll see how we go. Do give it a try on the link under the video. I don't know how hard this is, you know, maybe half an hour. Might be a bit more because, yeah, there's a couple of interesting things about knights move puzzles. And, and I think there's a hint at something going on in this one, but we'll see. Give it a try if you feel like it. Um, I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And, yeah, we've got an, a 30 cage with an 8 in, so that has to be 9, 8, 7, 6. And a 29 cage, there is only one way to make that up, which is we're using 9, 8, 7, and 5 in four digits to get to 29. You need 9, 8, and 7. They already add up to 24, and then you've got to have a 5. So, ah, and this 25 cage is in a box with a 9 in it already. So... Yeah, that's very similarly. The three highest digits are 8, 7, 6. The three highest digits left after the 9. That's already 21, so it's got to be 8, 7, 6, 4. There's no other way of doing it. So we can rule 8 out of those cells, actually, and out of those. This 22 cage um, is less helpful. Didn't Simon have an annoyance with a 22 cage yesterday? I think maybe he did. Anyway, that's less helpful. Um... Right, now, what next? Right, I know something that comes next is that this cage has 6, 7, and 8 in it, and so does this one. Now, they form a sort of virtual X-wing. Wherever they are in the, in the cages, they must use up both 6, 7s, and 8s for columns um, 8 and 9. And that means that in those boxes, well, I mean, the way to look at it is you can't put 6, 7, and 8 in those cells. And therefore, the 6, 7, and 8 in column 7 have to be in this group of cells. So the 10 will go with a 2, 3, or 4. And I think we've got something similar down here. We have. We've got 7, 8, and 9 repeated in those three, in those two cages. So 7, 8, and 9 in row 7 form a triple there. And, okay, here's the first thing I've been thinking is, and the title of the puzzle might offer a window into my thinking. Now, there is a theorem that we mention occasionally on the channel, which is where we got introduced to set theory. 
And the theorem states that the blue cells in this puzzle are exactly the same 16 digits as the purple cells. And we can prove it um, by, by various means, but I don't know if we're going to have to. So maybe we will come back to that um, in a moment. And I, it's just the puzzle title, the fact that these cages are all totaled makes you think that's really going to matter here. Although that could be a blind. And I don't really know how it does matter yet. You know, the fact that I know there has to be 9876987546678 on this ring doesn't look very helpful yet to me. But maybe it is later. But anyway, that's one thing. I will tell you what the other thing is that I have learnt in the past. And this was something introduced to us in a puzzle by Potato Head, I think. I can't remember his numbers, but Potato Head worked out somehow that in a knight's move puzzle, eight of the dig Oh, this might actually be very important. That eight of the digits have to be in the Fistemafel ring. Because otherwise... How did it work? It's to do with the central cell. You can only have one digit that isn't on the Fistemafel ring. Okay, if a digit is not on this ring at all, maybe this is really going to matter. Let me, let me just think about this. Why do we know that eight of the digits at least have to appear on the Fistemafel ring? It's something to do with the central cell, and I can't remember what it is. So I think you have to imagine a digit not being on this ring. Where then is it? Um, and it must be in each of these two by two. Well, it's in one of the... Yes, that's true. It must appear in one of these dominoes in each box that they're in. So let's say that digit was there. It would also be up here. Remember, it's not on the Fistemafel ring. So it would also be there. It would also be there. And that means that it can't be in these two cells, because those two see those two. So it can't be in any of the orange cells. And that means that in the central box, or rather in column five, since it can't be in the orange or the blue, it must be in those three cells. In the central row, it must be in those three cells. And if it's definitely in both of those sets of three cells, it must be in the middle. That goes for any digit not on the central, not in the Fistemafel ring. And because you can only put one single digit in the central cell, this is it. Therefore, eight of the nine digits must appear within the Fistemafel ring. And I think that could be very helpful today because everything, that means that eight of the nine digits have to appear in these cages and the only ones we've got in them so far are nine eight seven six five and four so two of the other little digits one two and three have to get into this 22 cage which i was rejecting as useless a moment ago and it is absolutely not useless because now that has to be two three nine eight if you're only putting two of the digits in the most you can put in is two and three Eight, nine have to go in to accompany them. And that is how we are going to get to 22 in that cage. That's fabulous. Okay. I'm very glad I remembered what I am calling the Potato Head Theorem. Um, and I'm sorry if I've misremembered Potato Head's name. He's also the Sonic person, I think, on Discord. Um, And now we know that one is the central digit. That's one in the middle losing its religion. Um, right. I think that is definitely right. Yes, and I mean, that's for the reasons that I just stated. What Two and three. Sorry. Oh, no, maybe we don't know that one is there. 
We do know that, no, hang on, we don't, maybe. Yes, the, the theorem worked the other way around. I was saying if one isn't on here, then it must be either in those purples or alternatively in these greens. And either way around, it can never be in the oranges and in the central box, it has to meet in the middle. And that's if there's no, oh, that's in the wrong place. That's if there's no one. So it's that, I'm really, in fact, I've put almost all of them in the wrong place because I'm an absolute muppet today. But yeah, ones would always be then either in greens or oranges if there was no one on the Fistemafel ring and therefore always in the greens or the purples and therefore not in the oranges and therefore in the central column and row it would meet in the middle and have to be there. But that was if there's no one on the ring. However, now given the Fistemafel theorem, and I'd better explain that as well quickly, if I can, quickly. Um, the Fistemafel theorem, basically, the way I look at it anyway, it looks at, first of all, rows two and eight, and they're the ones with, and sorry, rows three and seven, columns three and seven, they're the ones with all the colors in. And those are four sets of the digits, one to nine, but they count these twice to achieve that. That must be what they are by definition. Uh, if you take away the green and purple cells, then you have got four sets of the digits, one to nine, counting these twice, minus green and purple. The same is true if you look at the four corner boxes and you take away those four corner boxes are four sets of the digits, one to nine, in exactly the same way. You take away the green and purple cells and what remains is four sets of the digits, one to nine, minus the green and purple cells, just as it was for the Fistemafel ring. And if you take one set of these away from each, you are left with exactly the same set of digits. So that's not a brilliant way of going through it, but it is true. And now we are left with the fact that this blue ring contains these numbers. So it doesn't... Okay, it doesn't contain a 1, but I still don't think that means we have to put a 1 in the middle, and I'm not going to do that. I'd be quite interested to find out if, at the end of the puzzle, the central cell is a 1. It probably is, but I don't think it's justified by what I've learned. Right, what I can do is note that 8, 9 is there, 8, 9 is there. So 8, 9 must be in these three cells. Um, 8 only as a common digit between those. Eight again in these three. Oh, I've only just seen this incredibly useful piece of information that nine looks into both of those cells. So this 15 cage is made up of eight, seven, and we've suddenly discovered where eight goes, not in that cell. So I can write those in, eight and seven. Sorry if you've been shouting that for a while while I've been doing this, what I think of as advanced stuff. Um, seven comes out of those cells. And there may be other ways to attack this puzzle that I, I haven't done, but this way will work and that's why I've done it. So let's just get rid of the green and purple colouring now because I don't think it's needed anymore. I'm going to leave the blue. In fact, I'm going to colour these Fistemafel boxes purple because I need to match them up. I know what I could do, actually. I could take out 9678 there, 9678 there. Let's remove the colours. So I've still got to match blue and purple. Um, well, OK, I'll leave it for now. But I've got to get a 5, a 2, a 3 and a 4 on this ring. Yeah, OK, right. Um, now, where are we? Where are we? We need a 12 cage, right, without using 7 or 8. So that's a 9-3 pair. We've got the Knight's move. I have not forgotten that. 3 and 9 goes in there. This can't be a 3. That's not a 7. Now we will have 1, 2, 4 and 5 still to place. I don't know how to do that. Um... This is not a nine now. Oh, in fact, nine, nine can't be nine there. Yeah, okay, that's not great. 
8 is in one of those two. We've got this 8. How can we use that? Not much. Maybe using this 7 makes more sense. Yes, there's a 7 there. So that 7 reaches that by knight's move. So we get a 7 in one of these two cells. That's another fake X-wing with that group. And that's made this set a 7, 8, 9 triple. Um, so that means this can't be... Um, it can't be seven one, so it's either two six or three five six reaches that cell. So there's only one way round. It could be. Come on, keep going. Oh look, seven eight are looking down at this cell, so that's a nine. That's not a nine now by the knight's move. That those aren't eights actually. That's quite interesting. Now, what next? Well, I'll tell you something else interesting. There's... Yeah, there's this odd set of... <sighs> this group of cells, which must include one, two, three, and four, that's incredibly, well, it's close to incredibly useful. Those group of cells, because of the row and the pencil marking we've done, they must include one, two, three, and four. They all see this cell, those two by knight's moves, and those three by being in the same box. So this cell can't be one, two, three, or four, because they must appear there, and they all look at it. It also can't be seven, eight, or nine, so that's five or six. Oh, uh, Good grief, exactly the same thing goes for these cells in row 9. They're all looking at that cell. That's right, yes, okay, so these, for some reason I thought this was all about rows 2 and 8, columns 2 and 8, but no, it can be about row 9 as well. 1, 2, 3 and 4, in fact, that 5, 6 we put in has made a quintuple. 1, 2, 3 and 4 are sitting in those cells, and they're all looking at this cell. So that can't be 1, 2, 3, 4. 8, 9, 7, or 6. That's actually given. That's a 5. So now we get 6 there. Oh, that's fixed this whole cage. Oh, we're flying suddenly. 5 can't be there. Uh, 7, 9 as a pair can't be there. So that's a 5, 8 pair. I don't know the order, strangely. Um, oh, 6 now can't be there. So that's an 8, 2 cage. Yeah, we knew 8 was up here. What about this 2? Nothing about that 2. Yes, something about that 2. It's looking at this cell. So now this is a 3-5 pair. That's fixing the 8-5 pair at the bottom. No 8 there. Or 3 there. That's a 2-9 pair. This is a 3-8 pair. We're going to def... There's, there's a 3 there. There's a 3 there. There's got to be a 3 in one of these two cells. Oh, this box can't, this cage can't have a 5 or a 6 in it, so it's a 3 4 pair itself. That's another X wing on 3s, so we're going to end up with a 3 in one of these two cells. And that could well give us the 3 in the Fistamafel ring. 7 is looking up here. Gosh, lots of stuff has happened here, so that has become an 8, a naked single 8. Right, 7 there. The 8 fixes 3 and 8. Um, yeah, Knight's Move does some really, really, really weird things, doesn't it? Here's another thing that it sort of does. This cell. This cell in box four here, where does it appear? Whatever is in that cell. Oh, no, actually, I was thinking it doesn't appear in those. Um, so it must be in one of these. Oh, sorry, I was just thinking I, I got the wrong picture. It's that cell that wouldn't appear there. Okay, that's not so helpful. So this one wouldn't appear there. 
No, okay, sorry, I was, I'm picking out the wrong relationship here. Um, let's look up the middle. Nine, five, six, eight, and seven. Everything else is one, two, three, or four. They don't all look at the same place. Seven, nine, eight, five, six. So we've got all one, two, three, four, triple. Oh, here. Yes, of course, we were reduced to a one, two pair that I nearly got around to filling in and forgot. Um, so there's a one, two pair there. They're not seeing anything particularly useful for me. Three in this cage is definitely in one of those two cells. Ah, that's getting a bit interesting. They both see this cell, which now can't be a three. That three sees all of those cells, which can't be a three. So there's a, th and those two can't be a three because of that three, four. That's brilliant. Oh, in fact, sorry, it's much simpler than that. That three sees those, that three, four pair sees those. So this is a three. That wasn't complicated. And it does place a three in box three. Rather repetitively. Um, yes, that sorts out three. It is on the ring there. That's looking at that cell. That's going to fix three here as well. This can't be three or four now. And that's not a three. Now we've got one, two, and four to fit in these cells. They're not all looking at one single thing. Oh, we've got a two, nine pair looking at that. Simple enough. Now, here we go again. What do we have in these five cells? One, two, four, six, and seven. And they're all looking, well, they are looking at that cell, which doesn't look like it matters, but they're all looking at that cell as well, which now can't be a seven, uh, which is peculiar, but it's true. Oh, in fact, it's much simpler than that. Where do we put seven in this column? We can't put it there because seven, eight, nine is a triple there. So this is where seven goes in the column. Um, in fact, it was always much simpler than that because I had seven pence. <laughs> oh, well, any way I get it is fine by me. Now, one, four, six, how about that? That has become a triple here. They're all looking at this cell, which therefore can't be one, four, six, three, five, eight, seven, or nine, and is a weird naked single two. Do you see, this cell sees all of those by night's move or in the box, and then it sees seven, eight, and nine in the column. So it must be a two. So the red cell is not a two, which is not surprising because I feel it's definitely gonna be a one. Two is gonna have to be in one of these two cells. Oh, I've got rid of three from the middle. So that's a one, four pair, so there's two. Now this is down to only one chance to escape being a one. Um, now, yeah, come on. What? One, four, and five here. They're the remaining cells in column two. And one, two, and five. Uh, three, six, eight, nine, seven, five. That's one, two, or four. In fact, is that the only place for four in this column? Yes, it is. Is that certain? Why did I think that couldn't be a four? Is that right? In fact, why have I, what am I doing here? Oh yes, this six, seven, eight was formed by this X-wing. So it is right. In fact, that's not an eight. This is now a six, seven pair. That is the only place for four in the column. That is definitely right. Um, got interesting triples going on, or pairs rather going on. Six, nine, seven, eight, three. That can't be a two, so that's a one, four pair. That's a two. This is a one, four, five triple. That makes this a six. Um, I've really given up on the fist and fell ring, haven't I? Which is a bit silly. So nine, seven, eight, I can take out from both purple and blue. Since I bothered doing the work on the fist and fell ring, it seems pointless not to actually try using it. Uh, three, that's all right. 
Now we've got a seven, eight, nine, triple. Oh, I can take out that eight. How about that? And hmm, if I'd placed four anywhere, I would be taking it out. Never mind. Let's keep going. Three, nine, two, eight. That's one, four, or five. No, it's not four because that's in a pair up here. So four is in one of those two cells and one of those two. That's probably a lot of easy stuff that I can't see. Sorry. Let me let me just try and figure out what I'm missing. Oh, I'll tell you what. This seven eight pair, that sees both of these cells. Because if you had seven there, you couldn't have seven in either of those two. One by night's move. Same for that. So one of those is a seven, so those aren't seven. Where does seven go in this row? Only here. So that's a seven, nine and eight. Right, now I can remove seven and eight from my purples and blues. And nine and six, there's one there and one there. We're going to have a two, four and five in this group of cells. That's what we've got to have there, and this is going to become a one. I think that's fair enough. I'm doing that. Uh, two, four, and five. I don't really know. That's two or five. And this is a one. That's a five. And I mean, we're, we're going to finish off now. One must be there. Four there. That does put a one in the middle, as I expected the whole time. Although I certainly couldn't have proved it before, unless I've misunderstood what I was proving with Potato Head's theorem, I possibly have. Anyway, we're getting there now. That can't be a four anymore because of this. One and six here, that's finished. We get a four and a one here. That's now a five, two, one, two, one. All of these perimeters are coming very nicely. This is a two, five pair, and that is looking at one of them. Four, six are done by ordinary Sudoku. Two, nine are now. And we've got six and nine to go here. I might as well eliminate five, four, nine, two, six from both blue and purple because it's all equated. Six and nine here. I don't know how to do them. One and five here. They are resolved. Oh. Five and one like that. Uh, this... Six, seven pair. Yes, there's a six over there. That is straightforward. So eight and five, three and seven in the middle, six and nine again here. It's a deadly pattern that I'm sure is not deadly. And that must be fixed by the knight's move somewhere. That nine is looking at that. Actually, that nine is looking at that. So those two are sixes and the other two are nines. And that is the puzzle and a very clever window into the Fistemafel ring by Spell Daddy, but also into what I've been calling, and probably isn't really called, the Potato Head Theorem, about there only being one possible number not on the Fistemafel ring in a knight's move puzzle. Worth knowing. <laughs> very occasional occasions in the future, perhaps. But thank you anyway for any comments you leave. <laughs> Whether critical or not, I don't really mind. Um, and uh, thank you for your attention to our channel as ever. Uh, it's always a pleasure bringing Sudoku to you, especially when it's as clever as this. Bye for now.